Welcome to lesson 38 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 7 in the section on hydraulic cylinders. In this lesson we will be talking about piston speed control. Now the selection of the speed of the piston or piston rod is done according to the needed speed of the work device. If uh, the change of speed is needed during operation, flow has to be changed as we talked in the previous lesson. So we have to change the flow of the work fluid that is brought to the cylinder. Now, speed is equal to flow divided by area. We cannot change the area of the piston. We have to change the flow. And flow directly influences speed, as we can see from this equation. Now, there are a couple of different methods for speed control. We are going to cover them in this lesson. Now, one of, one of the more expensive ways of uh, controlling speed of hydraulic cylinders is by adjusting a two-way adjustable pump. So, we directly change the flow. Remember, from the pump section, when we talked about positive displacement pumps, we said that some pumps are adjustable. For example, like an axial piston pump. But the thing is, those kinds of units are usually very expensive. And this is a very expensive way of changing the speed or changing the flow. And this kind of system is used only when a larger powers are transferred. An example of uh, such a system with an adjustable pump is shown in this diagram on the left. We can see a cylinder, a double piston rod cylinder that is marked with number two. So it's a double acting double rod hydraulic cylinder. And we can see an adjustable two-way pump. What tells us it's adjustable? Well, this little arrow right here. And what tells us it's a two-way pump? Well, these two little triangles right here. So this unit is adjustable. You can adjust the flow. And by adjusting the flow, you can adjust the speed of this double acting double rod hydraulic cylinder. A cheaper way to adjust the speed of the piston is by using the bypass pipeline on the supply line. We can see an example on this diagram on the left right here. So here we can see the pipeline which brings the fluid in. So Q, the flow that goes to our hydraulic cylinder. But before it enters the cylinder QC, we have a little throttle valve right here. Throttle valve is marked with number one and it basically is an adjustable valve that lets a certain amount of fluid pass through. So one part of the fluid goes to the cylinder, QC, and one part of the fluid goes back to the reservoir or to the return line, as we see is marked with number three here. Now with the closing of the throttle valve, uh, the flow uh, of QR is being decreased and the flow QC is being increased, which increases the speed of the hydraulic cylinder. Now, this type of damping or throttle control is called supply line damping because we damp the fluid flow on the supply line to the cylinder. And this type of speed control is used very often in hydraulic systems. So, the smaller Q, the QR flow is, the bigger the QC flow is, and the bigger the speed of the hydraulic cylinder. Now, unfortunately, this kind of speed control is not very efficient. A great deal of the input energy is lost uh, because of this, this dampening system, and this kind of system is used usually on lower power hydraulic systems. Now, another weakness of this speed control type is that the speed can only be reduced from some maximum value to a minimum value. Efficiency, flow efficiency uh, is highest when we have a maximum value of flow and it's actually the lowest when we are at the minimum value of flow. And the third weakness appears when we have work devices uh, which undergo variable loads then it comes to an increase of speed of the piston, which can influence its work function. So if we have variable loads that are going to influence our hydraulic cylinder, we don't usually use this kind of speed control system. When we have these variable loads that our cylinder is going to be exposed to, 
then we use the system where damping is done on the return line or the drain line. We can see that example on this picture right here. So this is speed control using return line dampening. Now, this type of speed control is usually used in pneumatic systems, and it's also a very inefficient system of speed control. And it also goes from a maximum value to a minimum value. As we can see here, so we have a, we have supply line, so the fluid comes from the supply line here, okay. So this is the supply line. We have the return line B, okay, return line B, okay. And we have, we have C, we have overflow line. Okay, let me mark that, okay. So this is the overflow, overflow line. Now, here on the drain line, we have the throttle valve. The throttle valve on the last, on the supply line damping was on the supply line. Here we have the throttle valve on the return line. That's why it's called return line dampening. Now, when, when we are limiting the return line, of course, we are increasing the back pressure on the other side of the piston. With damping of this control valve, the flow is reduced in the system. However, because of the rigid characteristics of the pump, the zone of adjustability is usually very small. Now here we have a pressure relief valve. Um, that's when the pressure in the system reaches a critical value. The pressure relief valve will open and it will let a certain amount of fluid go to the overflow line back to the reservoir to ensure our system runs in a certain pressure limit. Now as the dampening on the return line increases, the amount of the work fluid which goes through the pressure relief valve increases as well because we are bringing up the pressure in the system and the speed of the piston will reduce. So this type of speed control is usually used in pneumatic systems as we said. The only difference would be that uh, air from the cylinder is discharged directly into the atmosphere. It doesn't have to go back to the reservoir. Now we saw all the variants of speed control where we want to reduce speed, but what about if we want to increase the speed of the hydraulic cylinder? So what if we want to bring our speed from a minimum value to a maximum value? Now if we want to increase the speed of the hydraulic cylinder, but the amount of work fluid that is supplied to the cylinder is constant, we use the scheme of connecting the supply and return line of the cylinder assisted with a distributor or a directional control valve, which is marked with number one on this picture. Now, this is a normal piston speed layout. So work fluid comes to the back of the piston. It fills the back. It pushes the piston to the left. But what if we want to make the extrusion of the hydraulic cylinder faster? Now, we use this speed increase layout. Now, in this layout, fluid is blocked. It doesn't go through here, it doesn't go to the distributor. But in this speed increase layout, fluid actually goes here and it goes here and it goes in the front of the piston. Now, this scheme, as you can see, pressure on this line and this line are the same. So it is connected to one line. Let me just mark it with red. So this here has the same pressure. This means that we have the same pressure on the back of the piston and on the front of the piston. Because we know that the force is equal pressure times area, we have one force pushing the hydraulic cylinder to the right and we have one force pushing it to the left. Because this area is bigger than the area on the back, the piston will be pushed to the right. Now it will be pushed faster because the flow will be assisted with the fluid that is on this side. So we are going to have a boost in flow. As we said, this is when we have a constant fluid coming from the supply line. So if we can't change the flow coming to our cylinder and we want to increase the speed of the hydraulic cylinder, we use this scheme. 
in the case the return line isn't a work line, uh, meaning it does not connect to the supply line, the speed of the piston in the retraction phase should be higher because we have a smaller area and as we said speed is equal to flow divided by area if the area in the denominator is smaller the speed is going to be bigger. So this is when we have a double acting cylinder with the piston rod on one side the retraction is always faster than the extrusion. Of course if we're talking about a uh, constant flow so if the flow is the same retraction is always faster than extrusion so it's going to be faster going to the left than going to the right. Now we can see this picture and we can see the equation for speed right here. So this is actually the speed for retraction and this is the speed for extrusion. Now here for the speed of retraction which is usually marked with V2 we have eta Q the efficiency the flow efficiency factor times the flow of the fluid that goes into the cylinder and in the denominator we have area of the piston which is this right here minus the area of the piston rod which is the cross-sectional area of the piston rod right so right here and when we take that and when we subtract this area what area what we have left is this area right here. So this is the area onto which our pressure is going to act. So we can see that the bigger the cross-section area of the piston rod, the, the bigger the speed of retraction. So if we have a really thick piston rod, the area of the back of the piston is going to be smaller, the speed of retraction is going to be bigger. Now if the piston rod area is for example half of the piston area, the speed of the retraction phase is going to be two times than the work phase or the extrusion phase. So if the area of the piston rod is two times smaller than the area of the piston. Now of course if we go back here uh, we have a double acting double rod cylinder. If we have a cylinder like this the speeds of the extrusion and retraction or the cylinder going left or right are going to be the same because the areas of effect are the same on both sides of the piston. Another case is a single acting hydraulic cylinder that has a spring return, it has a spring built inside of it, okay? So it has a spring built inside of it that does the retraction for us. In that case uh, the speed of the retraction phase is dictated by uh, the degree of the compaction of the spring. The more the spring compresses in the work cycle, so the more we push this spring in, the faster the retraction of the piston will be. So of course this makes sense only to some value of compressibility of the spring because otherwise the overly compressed spring greatly reduces the work force because it opposes the work fluid that is supposed to output a certain force. So we can compress this spring to a certain degree. And this is it for the speed control lesson. Thank you for listening and for staying focused. Join me in the next lesson in which we will talk about flow in hydraulic cylinders.